Yeah, hi guys, it's Jimmy. And um, as you can see, I've got my deep sea on the table. Uh, pretty cool on the NATO strap. Been wearing it like this for a week or so. Time to put the bracelet back on. A little bit concerned that the strap might leave marks on the case back. So, enjoy wearing it like this though. Very comfortable. Um, I'd like to apologize guys, I haven't put any content out. Just been busy with work uh, this time of year, end of financial year tax planning and work and it's just sort of stressful time of year kind of happy at the end of the month sort of all over now uh get back to normal and uh i was looking at the auction results on the uh geneva watch auction the phillips uh geneva au uh, auction um and uh i think they had very strong results did very well uh i just can't believe some of the prices that were achieved anyway what I thought is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll I took some uh, screenshots of the ones that were interesting to me, and uh, we'll go through them quickly. Uh, before we do, let's show you where my uh, Seiko Five. Yeah, just taking the screenshots on my phone, so I'll just put it in front of the uh, in front of the camera. Okay, it's pretty good. Well, these are the first two, so yeah, modern Rolexes. Uh, the gold piece, you know, fetching retail price, and the stainless steel DMT Master II uh, going quite high. So, yeah, surprising results, I think. Um, I'll just quickly try to go through them, guys. Uh, they, these are in Swiss francs also, so you'll know that's you know, similar to American dollars. Um, so we've got the current Royal Oak, a strong result there. Uh, here we've got a vintage uh, Nautilus 3700 in white gold. It's just huge money. Uh, on the right side, uh, we've got the 40th anniversary chronograph Nautilus. Um, we always we knew that yeah that would achieve big money, but nearly half a mil. Um, uh, Zenith uh, El Primeros. Uh, I didn't realise that they go that high. It's just amazing. Uh, this uh, Blanc Pine. Uh, 50 fathoms uh, Yeah, very strong result. I'd love to have one of them in my collection uh, The Explorer 1655 so Explorer 2 uh, If it's in good condition, I think that's probably on the money 1016 uh, if that's a gilt dial, I think it may be I think that's not bad. I think the um, buyer did okay um, the Zenith Daytona uh, Treasy dial, if it if the case is nice and maybe it's got the full set, I guess that's how much you got to pay. Um, now this sixteen eighty, the red line, uh, huge money. Now I don't know, the, the case doesn't look all that great, especially the crown guards, they're quite thinned out. It looks like the dial could be color matched with the hands. Just not sure about that one. Huge money though. Uh, so the Rolex here, the 6200, uh, you know, big crown, Explorer dial, um, I'd love to have that watch, but at that kind of money, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. This here I just put in because it's interesting, uh, the, the dial really pops, and uh, very strong result I think. Now the 1675, it's an early one, uh, probably 63 I think it was exclamation mark um, case and dial looked original bezel insert is an older one but may not be original um, don't remember if the bracelet was the uh, correct year for the watch but um, I think if you know if most of it's original I think that price is not too bad it's quite rare As you can see, we've got the modern Pepsi here in stainless steel. It's just huge money. For that, that money, you can buy the, you can buy it in gold. Um, nothing against the watch. I love it. I've got one, but uh, I wouldn't pay that much. It's just, yeah, way above the grey market. Um, as for the uh, uh, the full black GMT Master Two, all right, it's been discontinued. Um, you pick them up. Yeah, a lot cheaper than that here. Half the price, actually. Uh, the uh, Turnograph here, 
it's just huge money. I can see it is something rare. It's got a, you know, it's got a sign dial, but um, yeah, massive money. JPS uh, Daytona, that's a grail of mine. I uh, don't think it'll ever happen at that price, but uh, gorgeous watch. This reminds me of the BMW race cars in the 80s with the JPS colors. They were so cool. Uh, this Patek Philippe here, the 5070R, quite like that watch. I think that's on the money. That's what they're worth. Um, they're the last of the uh, Lamania based chronographs that Patek did. Yeah, I'd like to have one in my collection. Uh, the Amiga Speedmaster here, so it's an early one, uh, 2998-1, I think there was a dash 2, dash 3, maybe a dash 4 even, uh, this one's early, um, all the hands look original, got the lollipop chronograph hand, sometimes those have been changed, you know, if that, if that dial's authentic, if it's, you know, originally, really gone that colour, uh, I guess that's the price it's worth. The Tornik Ravel, so that's a Blancpain 50 Fathoms, but it's the military Tornik Ravel version. Most of them were destroyed. Uh, if I could ever get my hands on one, I'd pay. I'd pay for that. Beautiful watch. Uh, uh, you can see we've got the Kermit here. It's a flat four. Um, just the money is huge. I can't believe it. Uh, I remember passing on them years ago for ten, twelve thousand dollars. You know, it's just a sub with a green bezel, but uh, yeah, they've got so much traction. Uh, the Green Doll Gold uh, Daytona uh, current watch. I remember when they came out in 2016 or 17. I was offered one at a discount, uh, something like $36,000. Uh, and yeah, now they trade so high. It's amazing. Uh, as for the Jumbo on the other side, Blue dial, yeah, I guess that's what they achieve. 16700, too high. They're not they're not rare. Beautiful watch, but just not rare. Whether it's 16700 or 16710, you know, between, uh, I don't know, 16 and 18,000 Australian, that's usually what you pay, even, you know, for good condition with full set. So that's too high. These two Aquanauts were very interesting. Got a lot of pop, love the straps on them. You know, got that chocolate bar look. Uh, they killed it, you know, double the estimate. This Rolex uh, Day Date with the Stella dial, uh, it's you know, a real mustard color look. Um, yeah, huge money, 200,000. The Explorer dial 5513. If it's in good condition, yeah, I'd pay that much. I love them, I love the Explorer dials. Um, Pre Daytona here. Uh, huge money, amazing. Paul Newman on the other side. Yeah, we know what they fetch. Uh, 1019, that absolutely killed it. I bought one of them a few years ago. Uh, same doll, black doll like that. Uh, paid 30,000 Australian. So uh, that's really gone up. The uh, Patek Philippia, the, uh, so it's a 2526. That's from the 50s. Um, it's the first automatic movement they did, uh, and it has a enamel dial. And this is our first series. The enamel dial was uh, uh, it was made with flared holes, so that, that that's how they fit the indexes. Um, there's a high failure rate trying to make those dials. I think one out of every ten succeeded. So the second series, they glued the um, indexes on. And then the third series, they went to a steel dial. So the first series is the one to have. I've actually been keeping an iron one that's for sale for a better price than this. Much nicer case. Um, so, yeah, that's on my radar. Uh, 1675, gilt dial, last of the gilt dials, 1966. It's actually the exact same year as mine. Um, mine's slightly better, I, I, I think so. Uh, but yeah, above 50 grand, it's amazing. The Ultraman on the other side, we know that they fetch money, so good result there. Uh, now we've got the double red sea dweller here. Now it says it's a patent pending one, um, but the case is rubbish. Little crown guards, there's nothing left of them. 
I would not pay that money for that particular model. I know the patent pending are, are rare, but what's the point when the case is just destroyed like that? Another 6265, that's pretty much on the money. White Milgaus and <clears throat> the uh, Rolex Explorer, uh, not Explorer, sorry, the Rolex uh, GMT Master. So it's a, a 6542. Um, if that, the case was gorgeous on this thing. If, if that's the original Bakelite bezel and all the dial and hands are original, I think uh, it's worth every bit of that hundred grand. They're very hard to find with all the original parts on them. So, yeah, if I could get my hands on one and I had that kind of money for sitting around, I'd definitely buy it. But that's me. Um, Seamaster 300. Uh, yeah, I love that reference there. This one was very knocked around, but honest at the same time, very original looking. So I guess that's what they're worth. That's not too bad. The Audemars Piguet here, the minute repeater. Now, it's not a shape or size many men would wear these days, but I'll tell you what, for the color of uh, movement that watch has, that's a steal if you're into the complications. This uh, Royal Oak here with the diamond indexes doesn't do it for me. I don't, I, there's, n there's nothing I like about that dial, and to get the kind of money is just, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of ugly to me. And I like Royal Oaks, so. And as for these two here, a couple of vintage pieces. You've got the Nautilus and the Royal Oak. Um, the condition is, it may be original, but they've been so over-polished and badly polished, they've lost all their interesting angles, and I would not pay that kind of money for those kind of examples. Up close, the cases are terrible. So, anyway, that's my take on it, guys. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys uh, thought of the auction and uh, in any particular models. So uh, till next time, guys, uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.